Hello, my name is Lisa. I work for SMART since seven years. Uh, SMART is a cooperative that offers uh, solutions for freelancers. So basically, we give a secure legal framework for freelancers to operate in. So today, I'll be speaking a little bit about the history of SMART, because we are known as being a very big organization. And uh, since a few years, we have a lot of younger kids that are wanting to set up co-ops and that are coming for advice to our company. And they are uh, very fascinated by the size of our company. And they often forget that we are 20 years of age and that the co-op model that we started implementing 20 years ago is a patient business model. And so we managed to grow big, but we did so by being patient and explore a lot of different um, strategies throughout the, the years. So I'll talk a little bit about the beginning, and hopefully that will give some hope to people like CopeCycle who are doing a fantastic job. So, SMART, um, who are we? We are a co-op that started 20 years ago in the social economic sector. So we did not set up our company as a co-op when we started. Um, the aim of SMART in the beginning was to say, okay, there's a lot of problems with the artistic sector because it's a population that has a lot of problems of declaring their work. And they have a lot of problems because they have roller coaster revenues and they are not very good in administration. And it's difficult to be good in an administration when your administration field is extremely complex. And so the idea was to say, let's find a solution to take over that administration burden from the artistic sector. And the way we decided to go around that was to decide to um, open up a company and say, okay, instead of every single one individual needing to set up a company, needing to have its own VAT number, its own accountant, we could share a company with all those freelancers and they could actually use the, the company as if it was their own. And so that was the idea to start with. To solve the question of social security, we decided that all the artists working with us would become an employee of our company the time of their mission. And we do so because the best existing social protection currently existing within Belgium is linked to um, the employment contracts. So we are not willing to... Um, to, we are not fighting for the employment contracts as such. We are fighting for the best social uh, protection possible for the workers that choose to work with us. And so we set up a company. People can uh, ask us to build um, their clients. Smart will build the clients. The money comes into the structure of Smart. And then they can decide to make a con an employment contract the, the, the day of their gig. And so that worked out very smoothly and we got a lot of traction uh, quite easily because what we created was something that was really answering a very existing need and that was something that was very urgent in the sector that we were operating in. And um, so we grew quite big, but the challenge that we encountered very quickly is that the administrational burden that we promised that we would take over from the artist Actually, we've put it upon ourselves and it started to get very challenging to face all of that administration because we were operating in a very complex administrational field. And so the way the founders got around that problem was to um, invest very heavily into a digital platform which is currently something that seems an evidence, but we are talking of almost 20 years ago, and 20 years ago that was st still a very bold choice to do. And um, by doing so, we managed to scale our business model, and so we managed to um, have a lot of, we, we managed to serve a lot more people than we did up front. And um, 
people just use, some, they only come to the office when they really need to come to the office. Beforehand, they needed to come to the office to make up their invoices, they needed to come to make up their employment contract, they needed to come over for the expense notes, and now they can do all of that online and they know they are secured. It's a trust-based system. I, yesterday, there was a little bit of talking about trust. Um, I think you should trust people. Uh, the default is people, people that are not trustworthy. In our experience, uh, most of the people are, use, are not misusing our system. So we should definitely bring back uh, trust. And I don't think we need a blockchain to do that. Um, our members um, can log on the platform, make up their billing, make up their employment contracts. We become the employer of every single one of our freelancers. So if you log on the platform and you say, I'm, I'll be working for Smart Tomorrow, we assume that that will be true and we will execute the responsibility that is linked to that. So uh, today, those are the numbers of Belgium alone. We have 83,000 members. The Belgium structure converted to a co-op last year. And so on those 83,000 members, we have 17,000 active uh, stakeholders of the cooperative. We serve their 110,000 clients. We have a turnover of 150 million euros. So 150 million euros, that is what the members are invoicing throughout company. We uh, take 6.5% on that revenue. And it's the 6.5% that we take that enables us to um, offer all the mutualized services that we are offering to our members. We are currently developing the project in nine European countries. And so when I say that we mutualize everything, that means that in 20 years, we never distributed any dividends to any stakeholder of uh, our company. And so all the money that has been earned with SMART has been reinvested within the company and within the local communities of the, where we are operating. So we do have a platform and it's the technology that enabled us to scale our business model, but we're very much a face-to-face -face, uh, company with office spaces in all the cities where we are currently operating. Um, the first thing that we mutualized is everything that is linked to the administration. So we are a shared company offering employment contracts, offering insurance, making sure that all the paperwork is done and that people have access to their paperwork online. The second thing that we realized um, serving first of all the artistic community and then all freelancers because we realized that what we managed to develop for the artistic community was actually something that could serve almost all freelancers because they have very similar patterns in their way of working. And so when on the 150 million that we, we invoice in Belgium on a yearly basis, 50% of that is actually coming from the service sectors nowadays. Um, we realized that freelancers and artists have roller coaster revenues and that they have a lot of problems of getting paid of their clients. And so what we decided is to take care of the debt collection so people don't need to take care of that anymore. And the second thing that we ensured was that everyone working within the smart company would be paid within seven days at the end of their gig. And um, so that is reassuring for um, the freelancers because they know when they will actually get their pay, which is a very big challenge uh, when they are working outside SMART. The other thing that we are also doing is microfinancing because freelancers and artists are um, in a constant need of upskilling, upgrading the materials that they use to work. And for example, a graphic designer will need a new computer on a regular basis and a photographer needs a new um, um, cameras and stuff like that to be able to work. And so we will buy that material for them and then we will lease it until they can actually afford it to have it uh, by their own. Um, for artists, for example, what we will do as well is we will pay grants up front because a lot of theater companies, for example, they get a grant, but they are only paid once the project is already finished, but they still need to pay all the people that are working on the production. And so what we are doing is just paying that up front and then they pay us back when they actually get the grant. 
The third thing that I'm, we're strongly uh, doing is working on uh, new services. And one of them is uh, creative spaces, creative hubs. Uh, we managed to create a new framework um, to allow people to operate and work in uh, bring back collective dynamics within a very scattered workforce. But we realized that administrational solutions were not enough. If the future of work will be scattered as we can foresee it now, it's important to reinvent the workspace as well. And so we are investing heavily since the past 10 years in creative hubs, which are basically new forms of spaces and um, that are definitely not co-working spaces because we are a company that is investing in relationships. So it's very important for us that we do not offer a desk hopping service, but that we offer spaces that people can invest as if it was their own and uh, meet up with other colleagues, freelancers and stuff like that. So in Brussels, currently we are managing two of them, the Brussels Art Factory and La Vallée, that is the biggest project that we currently run. It is a project where we host 115 50 creative entrepreneurs. We have event halls, we do a lot of... Um, um, we do a lot of parties and uh, exhibitions and stuff to make sure that people can actually meet one another because we realize that people do not miss their boss and they do not miss uh, the company that they worked for up front. What they do miss is the colleagues and the coffee machine. And so the creative hubs for us is just a way to bring back the colleagues and bring back the coffee machine and to create social links within a very scattered workforce. And so you avoid isolation by recreating social links and building upon those relationships. So we never enforce people to collaborate, but it becomes natural when you share a space on a long-term basis with, um, with different people. And La Vallée is uh, celebrating its third anniversary this weekend. So we're very proud uh, that the project is going well. And currently in France, we actually have uh, several cities that came to our space and are interested for smart bringing our expertise in their cities and opening up spaces in their cities because uh, policymakers do realize that there's a real challenge in the future to bring back new dynamics in the workforce and make sure that there's uh, social links happening there. And so normally if everything goes fine, we will open up five spaces in the upcoming two years in France. And the biggest one that should open up the quickest is in Lille. And then the last thing that we're also doing is we are investing, we are doing a lot of lobbying around um, social security because we strongly believe that it's important to reinvent the social security for the workers of tomorrow. It's uh, not normal for us that regarding which contract you are executing, your social protection is different. And it's especially not normal for the future of work because we can see that people don't have that pattern anymore of one employer, one contract um, over the, the course of a lifetime. And so they have a very more scattered um, work pattern. And it's important that regardless which way they choose to work, that they can fall back on the best existing social security. And so we use the employment contract currently to say that is what we manage to do the best and how can we reinvent the social security of tomorrow. And that's also the reason why we invest heavily on uh, the European development, because Belgium is sadly a very, a very small country and on, their own, on our own, we will not manage to, um, to uh, make a global change. And so it's very important for us to invest in the, in the development in the European uh, Union so we can have leverage on a European level and see if it's uh, possible to reinvent social security for all workers throughout Europe. And so currently we're operating in eight different countries. There's countries that are very much in the same startup phase as projects as Copa Cycle or other projects that we've seen today. Um, other countries that are really upcoming, like France, Italy and Spain, that are, um, will be able to, to 
carry out our uh, European development uh, throughout Europe um, in the upcoming years. And so hopefully we will um, be able to reinvent social security and basically all the services and the new services that we're developing for our members are looking into ways of bringing back solidarity and we use technology, technology to mechanize that solidarity amongst our members. And the idea is really to bring back collective dynamics in a very scattered workforce. So that was a very quick uh, resume of what SMART is doing about. I hope I didn't speak uh, too, too quickly because I tried to fit everything in. If you're interested in specific topics, or if you're in Belgium and you want to come visit, if you want to Skype or have a coffee, that is my email address. So you can always drop me an email and uh, we can set up a Skype meeting or you can drop by in the office and we will be very happy to meet you. Thank you very much.